Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to my best racing start I've potentially ever had. Of course, today is the Tuesday race of my spec series. We are on Dragon Trails Gardens section and already, as you can tell, with these Alfa Romeo 4C GT3 cars, it is hectic. Everybody is rubbing doors and trying to get up into position in this opening lap. We are fighting hard and the course is very, very sunny. The tires are very cold, so we're doing a lot of these very deep dives into one another, trying to make up these positions early. As we know as the race goes, these positions, these gaps between one another have a tendency to widen up. It's a very sunny day here in Dragon Trails Garden track and behind me I have Paven already looking to pass me out on the outside. He does so as he has some great confidence with his tires and his brakes. I happen to see him coming and I just kind of move out of the way. I'm struggling with these tires at this moment. This car I have turned off traction control as it is actually a fairly stable car. You just have to worry just a little bit about the throttle, making sure that you're not pushing the throttle down in any weird positions, any weird places where you're over rumble strips or you're going around a corner and you're entering the throttle just a little bit too soon. And at this moment, I have lost all my position here. I'm looking up on the inside of Magnum here. I don't quite have the confidence on the brakes. I'm staying on the inside, giving them as much room as possible. I start coming over into the apex, and I just happen to lose focus of where he is. I have a little bit of a door rub with him. I lose a little bit of traction. He keeps on to the racing line with no issues and manages to sneak on by with the spec racing here. I want to say that I've got slipstream on weak. But with these cars, it's just, they're so evenly matched. In this entire time, I am trying to figure out every way, every trick in the book that I can use to make up position here against Magnum. It is just, he is, in this next lap or so, you will witness one of the best examples of defensive driving that I've seen in a while. It's normally Magnum doesn't have a whole lot of tendency to be able to showcase his ability. But when it comes to this defensive driving, I am to this day am just astounded about how well he was able to put his car right on the racing line. And when you practice these tracks, you're always trying to just practice the best racing line, try to get the best lap time that you possibly can. You don't ever practice doing these random moves on the outside, outside of the racing line where the tires haven't really gotten the grip down on the outside of the corners. You're always just working on the inside of the corner where the, where the traction has already been laid, where the rubber has already been laid. And again, he is just putting his car right on the racing line, and it's just impeccable driving by Magnum here. Again, I'm looking up on the inside once again trying to do this move, and again, my confidence on the brakes is just not there. I see a flashback of happening that first lap, and I say, not today, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing a repeat of that. So here, like I said, a little bit of slipstream, just inching closer and closer and closer to this rear wing. And I give him a little bit of a tap, I'm trying to give him a little bit of a bump drop, but instead it actually upsets his car just a little bit, pushes him wide, pushes him off of the racing line. He comes on back, but I go on into the inside. I go over the rumble strip, lose a little bit of traction. He on the other side goes over the rumble strip, loses a little bit of traction. He gets back onto the racing line and then once again is back on defensive driving. Some amazing moves by Magnum. I am just squirreling, trying my best to get around him, but he is just not letting it happen. Again, I am late on the brakes, trying to get really on the inside, and this is the moment where I push it a little bit too much. There is no rubber on the inside of that corner, and I just lose it. And this is one of the really big struggles with the spec races here, is that you can be so competitive, and it's so close, and everybody is within tenths of, a, of each other, but as soon as you have a mistake, everyone capitalizes on it and with other races there are times where your car might be a little bit faster in the straights than them depending on the car choice but in the spec races once again it's just everybody is the same so unless if you have this track down unless if you are seconds ahead of the competition there is no way that you can really catch up so at this point i am just absolutely furious 
I am distraught. I am disappointed because at this point the race is over. I there is no way about it. I am just sitting back at the back of the pack, going, "Son of a gun, that's it." But this is where the interesting part happens, as you've noticed around the track already by lap four it seems like the weather is changing and i'll touch on that a little bit later but at this point i am just focusing on my lap times i did a little bit of practicing of this track but not as much as i would have liked to as some of these fastest lap times they're going down to the 132 fours and throughout this race i think the fastest lap time that i had was in the 134 so i am two seconds off pace so trying to catch up to the pack is going to be a huge struggle in these next couple of laps. And as we're going through, I am just slowly inching my way closer and closer and closer to Magnum. And as it's going around, Magnum is making mention that the track is getting greasy for some reason. And that is true when it comes to the spec races is as the race goes on, the rubber is being laid down on the racing line and it just as the track evolves it both adds traction and as soon as it comes back around it starts to lose it you start to lose some of the traction on your tires you start making a little bit more mistakes as you're trying to keep it all on the line but it's just moving you around a little bit here so at this point it's the end of lap seven and i've made some gains here my lap times have not been greatly consistent but they are just a little bit better than he is and at this point, he's talked about how turn one is getting really greasy here. He's having a lack of confidence there. And I start pushing further and further and further. And when we get to the 100 marker, I manage to late break ahead of him. He slams on the brakes a little bit after I do. And I manage to take him up on the inside, make that pass work. And already, after a couple of corners, I have a very big gap between myself and him. And at this point, I am just hoping that something happens. I don't know if I'm hoping for the entire front part of the grid to fall apart and lose everything they've got. But at this point, I'm feeling like the race is pretty much said and done. But at this point, I reveal a little secret that I've had to myself regarding the race setup. What's that ring going to show up? Inside, inside, inside. I genuinely set rain to happen towards like more like at the what? quarter mark of the race. There's rain? I don't yeah. have rain tires. Well that's the point. What? It's it's what? just <laughs> it's just a little light rain that was supposed to show up. It's supposed to make just a little greasy, but it's not anything not anything too bad. And I set it up to show up after five minutes and it's still not freaking here, so I don't know what the hell. So originally we were going to run the Dragon's Trail Seaside course, which is objectively a better course. But of course I made a little bit of a lie, I'll say, and say, yeah, they, I like uh, the Gardens track a little bit better. Let's switch to that. So it was on Monday night that I made that change. And that was because I had figured out that Seaside, you cannot have rain, but on Gardens, you can and I wanted to start playing around with the group, start adding some wrenches into this. And I was hoping that adding just a little bit of rain, I'm not asking for torrential downpours, I'm asking just for a little bit of a, a dusting per se, where we can start adding some grease to the track, adding some very interesting competition where grip is no longer there and we're really having to struggle with these racing soft tires. But as I'm looking at the radar, it's just not coming. There's no rain. I think Magnum did make a very good point, saying that at some point there might have been a light dusting, but there just it wasn't enough to really show up on the radar, which I was a little bit uh, disappointed by. I had done quite a few tests with uh, some AI in some custom lobbies, and it just never... It seemed to always come by about halfway through the race or thereabouts. And with this lobby, for whichever reason, it just didn't really ever seem to come. So I know when it comes to Gran Turismo that there are some really unique settings. There's a lot of interesting settings that you have to play around with in order to get the weather to be exactly where you want it. And in this situation, I still have a lot of learning to do when it comes to this. So that it's something that I'll have to play around a little bit more with. And I'm, again, very disappointed that it wasn't able to pay off in this race. But as we come up across the line... I finish in 6th 
place out of seven. Not great. Not ideal. Not a great race to ever really remember, per se. But uh, definitely an interesting experience that I'll have to keep in mind when it comes to throwing wrenches at the group here with future spec races. All right, race two, thankfully, goes a lot better for me here. This is the Barcelona track, the GP circuit, unfortunately, with the chicane. I thought it was very interesting how this weekend, where it's Thursday, we have our Group B race on Barcelona GP. Then the F1 race occurs on this very track without the chicane on Sunday. And then for our Sunday race, which I'll touch on a little bit later, our 900 PP limit uh, vehicle. Again, same track, Barcelona GP, but again with the chicane. So this one was very challenging in a very good way because this track has got all sorts of different evolving corners and it's just a really fun flowing track. And with this car that I've got, the Nissan GTR, I've really started to love its grip, its handling that it has over the Audi Quattro. And at this point, I am just fighting for position. It's everybody seems to be so much more aggressive than I am, even to this point here where Bulldog goes really late on the brakes rear ends me and then unfortunately as collateral I shove Haven off and with this incident Ringmaster is starting to look up on the outside here I break early and we go too wide through this corner here I come out just a little bit wide but I see that he's got the racing line so again I let him have that Bulldog is coming back at it once again and like I said it's just these cars We've all had a significant amount of practice. We've started to really start to dial in our vehicles with our tunes and our suspension. And it's just awesome to see this close fighting, this close racing. And I struggle with this. There's a very fine line when it comes to this. I want to be aggressive. I want to be able to put my car in a place where it can fight for position. But I really don't want to knock doors much. I don't want to be known as that person that will just dive in on the deep side and then just ruin people's races by knocking them off the track by being too aggressive. But at the same time, too, by being so conservative, as you can tell in this race here, in a number of instances already over the course of one lap, I have lost multiple positions due to me being a little bit too cautious, leaving the door open where somebody is able to come in on the inside. We've got a moment here where Magnum just has his rear tires pulls out on him and goes deep on the inside as all that's happening bulldog is able to again see this opening here where he's able to put his car on the inside shio is coming around on the outside ringmaster is losing place here shio i think has a little bit better of an exit here and he's starting to look up on the outside i put my car on the inside to block off on the racing line and we have a five-way battle for fourth position as we go along here, everybody's on the racing line. I start to look up on the inside, and I manage to start putting my car in a position to be on the line. Bulldog comes over, but then sees it, and then we are now going three wide into this chicane. Everybody's going very wide. I have to concede my place a little bit to make sure that I don't get any track limit penalties. Shio comes up on the inside there, and I, again, am just furious with myself where I want to be aggressive, but with these people here, they're pulling off some incredible moves, making them stick and making them work. I'm sitting here in the back of a line here. Five people, again, fighting for fourth position. I have a moment there with the last chicane there or the outs where the rear end of the car managed to, to kick out a little bit. I'm looking through the footage here, and I can't necessarily tell where Magnum picks up his one and a half second penalty. It must have been from that chicane. But here we are. I'm going too wide with Shio on the first corner. He manages to go later on the brakes and do a little bit of a drift all around the outside. Manages to keep seventh place. 
I see that both Bulldog and Magnum have their one and a half second penalties, so I'm thinking to myself, I might be able to make up two positions here. It is just awesome racing. Magnum is being really defensive on Shio. Shio breaks late, and I managed to collide just a little bit twice there, actually, with Magnum, give it a little bit of a rear bumper there. I am, again, just looking everywhere, and here comes Paven dives in late 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 on the brakes manages to make that move work shio has an issue where he goes wide and goes into the gravel i am trying to now find a way to keep close with everybody to make sure that everybody's getting me enough room coming up to turn nine we're looking at three wide i duck out early because i do not want to shove anybody wide there Haven goes just a little bit wide. I don't think he gets any track limit penalties. Magnum has to surf his one and a half second penalty, and I am now promoted to seventh place. I am looking close up. I'm trying to find a way to make any pass work on Paven. I know he's got great pace, but I'm going a little bit wide on that chicane. I'm trying to find any way to put the power down early, to really put the grip down in this very technical place. Paven goes just a little bit wider, but I'm following his line and breaking early. I am, again, just struggling. I go a little bit too close over that edge and get myself a one and a half second penalty on that last corner. That last corner is super brutal for that penalty. I think it's just very strict on uh, where your car has to be in order to not get that penalty. So I'm fighting off Shio. He, again, pulls off the same move he did a lap before. An incredible move on the outside where he puts his Peugeot into a drift. And he is millimeters away from my front bumper. How he's got his car tuned. It's more of a rear-end happy drift machine all up against this all-wheel drive Nissan GTR. So a complete rev a complete difference in philosophies as far as handling goes. I feel that uh, drifting cars when it comes to the groupie cars are more uh, acceptable on the gravel, but it's interesting to see how well Shio is maintaining, maintaining his position while he's drifting in front of me while this Nissan GTR with its all-wheel drive is just really sticking well. Shio has a moment where actually both of us go wide and again, I am just seeing this guy go all over the track, just going wide and then coming back and then drifting, and he's all over the place. We both have to serve some penalties. Shield will do his half-second track limit penalty a lap later, but now I've got to make up that one-and-a-half-second penalty that I just got there. And this is just incredible racing. I am, again, fuming at the fact that my ignorance as far as track limits has managed to put me behind so far where I was fighting with a group of five people for fourth place just a couple laps ago and it's seen this dream of getting close to the podium it's just slowly slowly fading away as once again I'm finding myself towards the back of the pack again I am fuming I am trying my best to make this work. We're coming down the main straight once again in lap five. There is a big gap between myself and Shio, but Shio is having some issues with the rear traction of his vehicle. And I'm thinking that with all of this drifting that he's doing, he's pushing his car wide. He's pushing his car off the racing line into the marbles. And I'm hoping that with the consolidation of the marbles, as they start to accumulate more and more and more as the race goes on, as he starts to fight with those marbles, or more or less to fight with his vehicle to keep the car out of the marbles, that I might be able to find some additional grip where he starts to fight so hard and loses so much time and so much grip as he's just throwing that car sideways around turn five. Again, his it's just wild to see all the smoke that he's kicking up where all these other cars that I'm fighting against previously are mainly Nissan GTRs or vehicles that have all-wheel drive or vehicles that just really have a lot of grip, a lot of handling. And it's so surreal to see him just drifting all over the place like it's some sort of drift event. But I'm trying and trying and trying to make up 
the place. He had to serve his half-second penalty, which made up a little bit of ground, but I am just really focusing on my lap times at this point. It is I am still like four seconds off the main fastest lap at this point. My fastest lap is 158.4, while Ringmaster is 154.2. I'm just hoping that this lap goes a little bit better. I'm noticing now that I cross the line with a 155.8. I'm only a second and a half off of the fastest lap, so I know I've got some pace here. My practicing, I'm hoping, is really paying off as I'm again sizing up some opportunities here that I can eventually find my way past Shio and find my way back up to the pack. And we're finding where our car's limits are. We're finding exactly where we can be to get the best lap time, to make up position, to get closer to the fight. And here I am going a little bit too close to the grass. It starts to drag me in. I'm able to recover just a little bit of a problem. Not too huge, though. But at this point, I am now concerned about Magnum starting to find his way up closer to my rear bumper. He's sizing up these opportunities himself to make a pass on me. And as I am struggling with my tires just covered in grass and dirt, they're losing traction, they're losing grip. And my opportunity of being able to make a move past Shio is just slowly... Well, actually, at this point, very quickly fading away as my car is no longer keeping pace. Shio has a massive moment where his car has a huge snap of oversteer. I cover up on the inside as I'm focusing more on my radar, seeing that Magnum is just pushing his car, trying to size up all these opportunities, making sure that he's right on my rear bumper, trying to force me into a mistake, as at this point it's very evident that I'm very mistake-prone as my tires are still struggling with the la lack of grip. Magnum has a moment where he almost collides with my rear bumper. I'm able to put my car back on the racing line and start making that gap widen once more as he struggles to get back up onto the line. Many laps happen to pass and I'm focusing on putting my head down, making sure that I'm getting the best lap times that I possibly can. At this point, Shane has laid down a 153.4, and my best lap time is a 155.8. And I know that I do not have the same pace as some of these other guys, but I'm hoping that my ability to put my head down, to focus on the lap time, to really focus on the raking points, and focus on making sure that my tires aren't beat up as much as other people are beating up theirs, and I'm just focusing on making sure that I'm reducing my mistakes and making sure that I'm more and more and more consistent as I'm starting to come so much closer to the group now. Shio is having so many issues with his rear tires as he's been shredding them to pieces. He manages to acquire a one and a half second penalty and he has to serve it this lap. I am sitting there thankfully saying that my hard work is starting to pay off. He is just struggling so hard with keeping his car on the course. I managed to get by and claim seventh place. I outbreak myself because I'm so worried about making that pass to him. I'm starting to sit there worrying that my attention towards the radar is more towards the mirrors than it is in front of me. I'm sitting here going that we only have a couple of more minutes left of this race and I need to focus on getting in front, getting in front of Omar and making sure that these next corners are absolutely perfect. I'm noticing that Omar has got a couple of mistakes here or there, but in all honesty, he's doing great. And I am just concerned that Shio is going to make yet another move on me. He's doing great about putting his car on the outside of turn one. I know his routine now. It's happened to me twice. I try to break as late as I can, but it's actually pretty early on this track, on this lap specifically. And I'm putting my car much from the teachings of Magnum. I am putting my car right on the racing line. I am trying to make sure that I am not focusing as much in the rear view mirror as I am focusing up in front of me. 
making sure that I am now three tenths up. I have a little bit of a moment where I go a little bit wide, but I'm able to bring it back in, put on the power a little bit early, and I'm noticing that I'm just getting ever so closer to Omar, and there might be a moment in the next couple of corners that I might be able to make this place up and go back to sixth place. I haven't seen sixth place since about lap three or four. My race has not gone all that well, but having some sort of redemption, having some sort of achievement to show off the dedication, the hard work of putting my head down and making sure every lap is perfect, every lap is just as best as I can to show that I can, in fact, race as hard and as well as everybody else in this group. And here we are. We are in the last sector, in the last couple of corners. We are looking up on the inside of Omar. I am braking as late as possible. I am sending my car as wide as possible, trying to find any some sort of bit of grip. I go very close up on the inside of the last corner. I could have had a one and a half second penalty. Would have ruined my race. But at this point, I have to concede that sixth place battle I have acquired I have achieved I have been rewarded seventh place and an absolutely incredible race so many incredible battles so many incredibly close calls and I feel after all of those laps of that dedication I am rewarded with seventh place it's not where I wanted to be but at the end of the day it was a great race to remember some great fights and sets a great mood to come back to this fantastic course once again for our Sunday race. And here we go once again. This is the Circuit de Barcelona Catalonia GP with the chicanes at the end. We are going three wide into the first corner. It is Flanders, myself and Shane. I duck out a little bit early to make sure that we have no conflicts, no issues. Again, the same problem that I've had before. I'm being a little bit too conservative. I am finding that even though that our tires haven't been warmed up quite yet, that I am still being a little bit too cautious where everybody else is trying their hardest to make up position. We have some very close fighting between Paven and Shane already for fifth place. And this is where the interest of strategy comes along. We have 900 power points to play with and half the group, half the grid, has chosen the Red Bull X24 standard, and the other half of the grid has chosen any one of the Super Formula cars here. Now, the Red Bull X2014 car is really interesting because it has well over a thousand power points as I am going well deep into this corner here, trying to block off Flanders if at all possible. I'm putting my car right on the racing line and doing a great job of it with this car. And it has an incredible amount of downforce, but with the amount of downforce it has, it has low straight line speed. And the Super Formulas is on the other side of the spectrum where they have a good amount of downforce, but they have such an incredible amount of top speed that they can just pull away during the straights. Once again, we have NOS overtake anything available i've forgotten again to bring nas so at this point the super formulas are really just pulling away as i'm trying to set up these corners perfectly remembering the training and the practice that i've had for the couple of days prior knowing that you can take a lot of these corners flat and you can take these corners a lot faster than the super formulas due to that downforce again the x 2014 you had to detune it absolutely in order to get it down to 900 power points and on top of that too you have to use racing hard tires at some point of the race with the amount of detuning going along everybody is having some incredible fuel economy so i think the play at hand here is just to run it straight from lap one to lap 18 on hards on fuel mode one and we all have well more than 30 laps at our disposal for fuel we'll have half of our tank left over by the end of it and again i am trying my best 
to hold off Flanders. I know that he's an incredible racer and he's got the lap times down. He, I believe, qualified well ahead of me. But at this point here, I am just trying my best to set the best lap time that I possibly can. Everybody goes over the line. 132 average. I have 132.8. I am happy. I am sitting well within the group. But as you can tell here, first through six has already made quite a bit of a gap between myself and the latter half of the group. Again, I am trying my best to keep this car flat on the ground. And at this point, as you can tell, I'm already starting to make up quite a bit of a gap. I am now three tenths down. I am now three tenths in the purple. And I am feeling great as I am starting to make that gap between myself and Paven really reduce. And I see the front half of the grid come closer towards me. And there's an element at this point. My heart is beating fast, seeing that Flanders again is trying his best to make that pass. I'm trying to make this car as wide as I possibly can. Uh, there has not been a time where my heart has been pounding so hard through all these races. I nearly have an incident there with Shane. I'm trying to keep my car on the line. I notice I have a little bit of an error with the traction. I'm going a little bit wide here, but trying to get down the power as quickly as I can and I am starting to really look up my opportunities where I can pass Shane. It's not going to be any time too soon. I know that these corners I'll be able to handle a little bit better than he can. Shio has a little bit of an issue with that last chicane there, and we're starting to come along our way on the main straight. This is the beginning of lap four. I'm pulling off a 132.8, only seven thousandths slower than our last lap. Shio manages to go wide and manages to keep his place there. Shane is now noticing that I am coming up with a vengeance here. I have a mistake here where I don't announce my presence and start to really get too close for comfort there. I'm managing to battle with the grass a little bit there. Flanders sees my mistake, comes up on the inside there. And again, it is just awesome battling as always. Four laps of an, a high adrenaline, a high intensity race here with our 900 power point racing supercars. Going around turn number nine, completely flat. I'm noticing that my brake marker is at about a hundred meters and I am still hoping that this high downforce vehicle can keep it stuck to the ground, go around these corners a little bit faster than Super Formulas, get up as close as I can to them before the main straights, before they take off with their overtakes. Shio, Paven, Shane, and myself with Flanders tailing behind are well in the mix for fifth position. I'm noticing that I pulled off a 132.5, three tenths down from my previous lap record. Shane manages to get the pass up on Shio for fifth place. I am starting to close in up on the gap. I know that Shio has got the downforce. Shane goes a little bit wide. He's trying his best to keep the car on the ground. Again, I am starting to look up on the inside. I break late. I do not announce my presence there. Shane is furious because I come out of nowhere. I break a little bit early. He comes up on the inside, goes a little bit wide, and we have a racing incident. I am just fuming at myself because that could have gone so well, and yet here we are. I am now a couple of seconds back from the grid, from the pack, and I know that could have gone so much better for so many different reasons, and it's just part of the... It's just how it goes. I have a lot to learn. I am still learning through all of these races how to just battle a little bit better, wheel to wheel, and announcing my presence, announcing that I was coming on in, and just pulling my head out of my... <clears throat> just to make note that everybody was aware of where I would be would be so much better. I'm struggling a little bit with my rear tires there coming out of that chicane and I'm noticing that I am struggling for time now. Ring has an inc 
incredible 130.7, and I have a 137 even. At this point, I am now once again holding off Flanders. At this point, a few laps have come down the order. We're now in lap seven. Flanders has been following me closer than my own shadow has been. I am now five tenths down on my fastest lap. I am fuming. I am trying my hardest to make the best lap times that I possibly can to catch up to the pack because I know I can fight amongst them. I know I can fight well. I have some experience, but I want to test that experience more as here we go. I go over that inside chicane a little bit too close, a little bit too much. I lose all that traction, get sent into the wall, and I am struggling. I am so angry at myself for some of these super easy, super novice mistakes that shouldn't be happening at this point. I have done so much practice with this track and this car and just this track in general that these are some really basic things that I am now missing. I have now fallen down the order multi double digits of time away from the next place. I have fallen down to 8th place, lap 8 of 18. And this is where I am just kicking myself, knowing that this could be the end of the race, that I'm trying my best to make up the time to Flanders, but his lap times have been as consistent as mine have been when the 132 range. So I need to pull off a miracle, something to happen where I can make up 10 seconds just all of a sudden in order to get back up to the pack. Four laps or so go by, and again, I have my head down. I'm starting to get maybe not as consistent times as I would like to have. I've got a 132.4 as my new lap record, for at least my personal lap record, should I say. And then I'm pulling a 133 and a 132.9. And again, like I said, I'm just hoping for some sort of miracle to happen where all of a sudden I make up 10 seconds, and would you happen to have it? There is a racing incident between Shane and Flanders where one of them runs the other one off, and the other one happens to wait for them to rejoin the track as they've been having some very close back and forth fighting, and they're now up in front of me. I have no idea what exactly happened. Is all of a sudden I'm just focused on the fact that they went from 10 seconds ahead of me down to three in a matter of just a lap. And I am now back into the head down mode. My heart is beating hard and fast as I see a potential redemption of the earlier novice mistakes that I had. So not only do I see them, but I also see a lapped car ahead of them. I'm not sure I wasn't quite sure if it was lapped car or not, but all of a sudden I am gaslighting myself into believing that there is a chance that I can get up further towards the pack. And as this is going, Shane and Flanders are still having some incredibly close fights. And thankfully, when it comes to those fighting, they are losing time. They are not focused on their lap time. They're focusing on their position more than they are again their time we've got junior coming up ahead of them and they're now trying to find the best way to get around him without causing a scene without losing as much lap time but also making sure that they don't leave a space open for one another to be able to make a dive on the outside as they're trying to go around junior again all of this is coming to a head towards the end of lap 13. Again, they are struggling to find that moment to make that pass on Junior. And Junior is struggling very hard with his tires. He's managed to let them by, but it's been at a cost of time severely to them. I am now within sniffing distance of the two of them. I know that Junior with the Super Formula has got the higher top speed than me. But he comes back into contention, and he starts looking up on the inside of Flanders. I think he notices at this point, being a lap down, he really shouldn't be fighting for a position a whole lot. 
and is struggling so hard with the corners there. I managed to avoid just a very close incident that was just about to happen there, and he manages to let himself out of the situation, and I start going amongst my way, trying to, again, focus on the fight that is at hand, the fight for 7th and for 6th position. Flanders, again, is an incredible driver as he's been following Shane again closer than his own shadow through all of this manages to know that even though that he does not have the straight line speed he's been following closer and closer and closer when it comes to those corners again since we're doing that corner flat in the Red Bull we are managing to get so much closer to Shane I have an incident where I misjudge my breaking point entirely have a huge incident where I rear in Flanders. I'm on the intercoms with Flanders going, I am sorry, man. Are you okay? How are you doing? And he manages to go a little bit wide, and he is thankfully still in contention for sixth place. I acquire a massive two-second penalty for a car collision issue. And again, I am kicking myself because of all of those laps of making sure that I have clean, perfect racing lines and having absolutely perfect laps are now completely being dismantled in my own hands. I managed to make a very clean pass on the inside. I know it's going to be completely in vain because at some point I'm going to have to serve my two-second penalty. I'm starting to get closer and closer to Shane. Again, I know there is no reason to fight for a position as I know Flanders will be coming up towards me very close just after turn nine on that straight as I again have to serve that penalty. I'm trying to see if there's any moment here that I can just get any time closer to Shane, get any time to lessen that gap before I have to serve that penalty. I get a much better exit on turn nine, but again, the moment has come. The penalty has been served and now I am back down a second and a half watching the same two people fight it out for sixth position that I've been watching for the entirety of the race. And I am just absolutely furious because I have had three major mistakes that have cost me dearly in this race here. I know I've got some decent pace and I know that I can make it up and I've got two laps to do it as we're now over line in lap 16 of 18. I actually have three laps to do it if you count this lap here over this last lap. I managed to lose three seconds on my lap time, actually four, considering if you include the fighting and the penalty. And once again, Flanders is just on Shane looking for any opportunity to get by him. This next couple of spots are the ideal place to do it as the Red Bull has an incredible amount of downforce, can really just keep it flat some, some of these corners. Shane is uh, just putting his ability on display, being an incredible defensive driver, keeping Flanders behind. I managed to keep a little bit of uh, inside line. We have a, just a tiny bit of a collision. But with him going a little bit late on the brakes, I managed to make that position stick. I am now up into seventh out of 10 with Shane in my sights. We have less than two laps to go as we're going through the final technical sectors of this course. Again, I know that this car has got some great downforce. I've been on the intercom to tell Shane, hey man, I screwed up earlier. I want to have some clean racing. I want to have some good fighting here. I want to stay as far away from you as I possibly can to give each other as much space as possible to allow that room to be there, to be able to have that fight, but not to have that dirty driving that I've unfortunately had so much issues with. Shane has got that straight line speed, but I'm starting to inch closer as we get closer and closer to the braking zone. I managed to keep that downforce going, and he is starting to really show off again that defensive driving. Flanders is right on my shadow once again, 
I'm going flat. I now call out that I'm going for the inside. Shane allows that space. I break early. We are going too wide. Shane is fo well, excuse me. Flanders is following Shane. I'm having issues with the grass because I'm trying to allow so much space as possible. Flanders makes that move as I'm struggling with that. Shane goes a little bit wide, and now I am following Flanders. I am sitting there going, I cannot be fighting Flanders right now. Flanders is not my race. I want to have that fight with Shane. I want to have that redemption, knowing that I can have that accomplishment of fighting close with Shane with not having any issues. I look up on the inside of Flanders. I break a little bit early. I decide not to go for the move. And as I decide to do that, I think it was the right call just so I can follow Flanders a little bit closer and not having those issues that I'm fighting with Flanders and Shane goes further off into the distance here. We're going around the last couple of corners of this lap and I am sitting there now starting to bask in the realization that 8th place might be my final resting place as we go over the line into the last lap i am following flanders who is following shane trying to get any little bit of slipstream as possible i am trying to break as late as possible try to take the apexes as close as i possibly can flanders is looking every which way to get around shane shane is just putting his car where he needs to be he notices where flander is goes deep on the inside i'm starting to follow flanders around the outside Shane starts to notice that I'm coming up on the outside, manages to put his car right in front of mine. Incredible defensive driving by Shane. I come up on the inside. We just nearly have some wheel knocking there, and he manages to maintain that space. He's got the better acceleration. I come up once again on the inside. He then is able to make his position and stick with it in seventh place. We now have that last final sector. Shane has an issue where he goes super wide just after turn nine. I'm starting to look on the inside. He dives in again. Some incredible driving by Shane. And I am now again just seeing if there's any way that I can make it past Shane. Shane has been on the intercom saying that his tire is having issues. And I managed to dive in on the inside. Finally make that place up. And suddenly... Here we go. I managed to not get that last penalty off of that last corner. His straight line speed is starting to catch up to me, and we go over the line, and he is tenths away from me. And at this point, a couple of people have made known that, unfortunately, they did not do the right tire choice. So Bulldog and Shane, unfortunately, get a massive one-minute penalty for having the Ron tires on during this race, where they're thinking they might have been able to make a uh, pit stop at some point. So Flanders is promoted to fifth place, and I do finally get rewarded with that sixth position that I've been looking for this entire race. Again, what an incredible race on uh, the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia as again practice 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 and i've struggled so hard for so long about how to drive amongst other people i have practiced those lap times but at this point the next skill level that i need to work on is making sure that i am fighting closer fighting harder but allowing space, knowing when it's perfectly fine to dive in on the inside, knowing when people are going to allow space and when people are going to cut you off and defend for their position as they rightfully can. So at this point, just these last couple of races on the Barcelona have been superb as I am starting to get closer with this group, starting to understand everybody's driving style, starting to understand where I can fight and where I should really just back off, let them have it, and know that there will be times in the future to make up that position. Again, wow. Some incredible races over this week. 
Again, I kind of want to forget about Tuesday, but do I ever want to remember that Thursday race and that Sunday race? Again, if you've enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We've got some more incredible racing down the line with our Downshift Racing League. Again, thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.